What's going on everyone? Happy Saturday and welcome back to my channel. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy, and testing negative for all of those viruses that can make us sick. It is time now for the Saturday edition of the virus update for Saturday, November 22nd, 2025. If you are new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where I do the daily virus update on all those viruses that can make us sick. Why do we do the virus update? Well, who the heck wants to get sick? Getting sick is not fun, and with some of these viruses, you can have long-term issues that will bother you for maybe a few months, a few weeks, or maybe even several years or the rest of your life. So you really need to be informed of what's going around. And now more than ever, you need to know because, hey, we're coming up on holidays. Thanksgiving's coming up this week in the United States. Want to stay informed? Subscribe to my channel down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with anyone you know and leave those comments down below. Of course, help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers. Already, we do have several news stories today. We are out in the wild. We're actually coming from a park called Pennypack Park here in Philadelphia. We'll correlate that with this video a little bit. I'm sure there's a couple things in here where uh, we could probably uh, bring this park into what we're going to talk about. All right. Uh, take a look here. Yeah, it's two pages worth of notes today. Had to be true to my out in the wild. I'm not actually working. Maybe I'll work a little bit. I don't know. But uh, we're feeling a little bit better than yesterday. More on that at the end of the video. Uh, starting off with this, very important, Japan. Flu cases are rising at the fastest pace in 10 years, with experts pointing to the rising number of tourists as one of the likely factors. Uh, yikes, uh, flu cases rising. How much are they rising, do you say, Mr. Data Report? Well, I'll wait till you get to these numbers here. Oh, they're not good. From November 10th through the 16th, 145,526 cases were reported across 3,000 facilities, averaging 37.7, which is above the warning level. So uh, flu cases rapidly rising over in Japan. Of course, we do know that uh, H3N2 is going to be a big deal this year, and there's this new subclade. I believe it's called subclade K. I should have wrote that down to remind myself. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's subclade K. The point is... Uh, it may be able to evade immunity from this year's flu shot. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. So uh, this is a very important uh, that uh, we keep on top of this because it could be a really harsh flu season. Of course, you've heard me say this a lot, and the probability of that happening is becoming more likely. The writing is on the wall in other countries right now. All right, speaking of flu season, we've been doing a lot of first of the year, first of the season, and we have another first of the season for flu deaths. Iowa, yes, the Iowa Department of Health and Humane Services, uh, HHS, announced the first individual related influenza uh, related flu death of the 2025 2026 respiratory virus season. The individual was an older adult from Southwest Iowa. So, uh, yes, Iowa now joins the growing list. We've talked about Connecticut. We've talked about Los Angeles, California. Talked about uh, another part of California, uh, North Carolina. Uh, we've talked about several states so far, and that list is only going to grow. Uh, these videos are going to be more and more filled with news reports going forward as things continue to increase. You're going to see more 20-minute videos, I think. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. All right, sticking with flu, but to a different type of bird flu, to a different type of flu. It's bird flu this time. And uh, that's something that could be even here in this park. There's often a lot of geese and ducks in the Pennypack Creek right over here. I used to feed them. Haven't done that in a very long time. But, uh, yeah, bird flu is a problem. And there's this newer version. We had H5N1. Now we have H5N5. And every time bird flu infects a human, it's just giving it another chance to uh, go off and do its thing and get smarter. Yeah, this is not good whatsoever. So in the state of Washington, we talked about H5N5 case in a relatively older person who had underlying health conditions. Sad update for this. The Washington state resident is believed to be the first person to die, yes, now die from a rare strain of bird flu, but state health officials said Friday, the risk to the public is low with the H5N5 case. That's always short-term. The risk is low. Yeah, that, that can be a short-term thing. Like last year when we saw the wave of cases, it was short-term. But long-term, I can't say that. 
I can't say that because at some point, one of these strains of bird flu could go human to human, and then the risk would not be so low. So I'm very concerned about what's happening with that. Uh, moving on to something else, they always say the risk is low, which turned out to not be the case this year. Measles. Yeah, some of these uh, measles cases have done multiplication games and turned into full-fledged outbreaks. The South Carolina measles outbreak is now up to 52 cases. Yeah, that's uh, not good. All right, I have to add this. I believe this was my own notes that I typed in here. No, but, well, you have to hear about this. We talked about how flu is getting bad and how news reports are going to get higher. Well, here's another reason why news reports could get higher. COVID could get bad once again. Yes, it could. Reports are coming in from many different places that BA.3.2 subvariant of COVID is increasing in many countries, including Germany. The concern this subvariant becomes the next big one is increasing. We would potentially see a major wave of COVID as it is different from anything we have seen in a while. So remember, and this is going to really go back in time. BA.2.6, what was that called, Priora? Yeah, remember that? That was a big change. Everything we've seen since that was just minor tweaks to what that was. Well, BA.3.2 would be another big change. And anytime you get a big change, you likely don't have a population that has immunity to that from what I'm reading. And mind you, I'm taking this from many different health experts, people who study this, and they are saying that this would not be a good thing if uh, BA.3.2 really takes off. And we're starting to see it go up in Germany. And it's been increasing a little bit in Australia. It's taken a while for us to do so, but BA.2.86, uh, that took a while for that to uh, dominate as well. And then eventually it did. So I'm concerned what would happen if it, it takes over. All right, let's get through some data from CJS now, shall we? I'm surprised how many cars are passing us. It's a gray and gloomy day here. I thought the park would be a nice, empty, quiet place today with, you know, the trails muddy. But hmm, what do I know? All right, some important data from CJS 83172. And uh, we're just showing numbers for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I believe he may have more numbers coming tomorrow and that'll be for tomorrow's video if uh, he does and tomorrow meaning today he's going to uh, potentially add some more data and we would try and fit that into tomorrow's video as you know dashboard sunday and wasteboard sunday has been really crazy lately uh tuesday main reported 144 new cases of covid and three new state reported deaths virginia 844 new positive tests wednesday numbers Delaware reported 163 new cases. Oregon, 422 new positive tests. It wouldn't be surprising if there was a uh, faulty data involved here since that figure seems high for the past six weeks worth of data. Washington, 160 emergency department visits for COVID-like illness and five new state reported deaths. Thursday. Arizona, 713 new cases. Connecticut, 254 new cases. Indiana, 742 new cases and one new state reported death. Iowa, seven previously unreported deaths for per the CDC's update last week, which goes to the week of September 14th through 20th. Kentucky, 412 new positive tests. Massachusetts, a net of 598 new cases and seven state reported deaths. Minnesota, 422 new cases and one new state reported death. North Carolina, 320 hospital visits for COVID-like illness. The CDC reports 124 COVID-related hospitalizations and 17 previously unreported deaths per the CDC's update last week, which goes to the week of September 14th through the 20th. New Jersey, a net of 1,339 new cases and seven new state reported deaths. We may be taking a look at New Jersey's uh, respiratory dashboard tomorrow. Last check, I believe it was Thursday I looked, or may have even been yesterday. I was not seeing an update this week, so we'll have to see. If they had an update here, they usually do update. Uh, if CJS gets the data, usually that means they can have their update on the uh, webpage that we show, you know, the dashboard that they have with that summary. All right, New Mexico, 385 new cases and four previously unreported deaths per the CDC's update last week which goes to the week of September 14th through the 20th. Oklahoma, 
227 new positive tests and a test case positivity rate of 3.98%, slightly down from 4.11% last week. Thank you so much, uh, CJS Charles, for uh, updating that information. And if you have anything else which uh, you said in your comments you made today, I'll try to get to it tomorrow or I might be uh, delaying until Monday. It, it, it really depends. We'll have to see. Uh, we're going to have a lot of dashboards and wastewater and whatever news pops up tomorrow. We'll see. All right. Taking a look at the coffee meter. It is time that we un reveal this week's coffee meter. For those who saw the previous week's video, it was six uh, That for that week. Previous week's out in the wild. We only do these on Saturday. Well, in most cases. We're upping it this week. Yeah, it's going up to 6.7 and why are we upping it i've heard an increase in coughing this week i've seen some people that just visibly looked sick uh, thank goodness for this you don't have to agree with wearing a mask you don't have to if you don't want to but yeah i think when i'm encountering people that could visibly be, be sick i think it just makes me feel a little bit better don't feel great but a little bit better and in those circumstances i do like to know what this shows this is my uh Aeronet meter, I like to know the CO2 readings to know, hey, should I be waiting outside for this uh, delivery or what should the case be? All right, ambulance meter for this week. That is going up. Last week was 4.0. This week is going up to 4.5. I've seen a slight increase in the number of ambulances and I'll get a much better read on that probably in the upcoming week. I got a very busy day Monday, very busy day Tuesday and Wednesday will be my annual delivery marathon. I'll go till late in the night because day before Thanksgiving, one of the busiest days of the year for these apps. Uh, Tuesday will be busier than normal, too. We may be going out in the wild either Tuesday and Wednesday or Tuesday and Wednesday with these videos. I don't know yet. We'll just have to see. We've done that in the past where I go out in the wild. Also, health dependent. Depends on how my uh, headaches are doing, which leads to the next line. Data report, long COVID update. Yesterday, uh, you may recall, we had to have a blood test. We had a horrible headaches in the morning. That persisted throughout the day. The headache's still there today. It wasn't bad when I woke up, but now it's starting to come back. But it's not as bad as yesterday, but it's still there. And mind you, oftentimes it gets worse throughout the day. So we really need to get that rectified. I'm going to have to see uh, probably a specialist. We'll see who my doctor wants, to, what route he wants to go. But speaking of doctor's appointments... I had my blood test for it yesterday. And you noticed I'm kind of a little happy about this. Uh, my blood test results came back already, which that's a good thing, but also a red flag because that's telling me that eh, a lot of people aren't getting PCR COVID tested or flu tested anymore. Yeah, usually when the people are doing that, the labs get backed up and blood test results take longer. It came the very next day. Okay, surprise. Here's the good thing. Uh, the majority of the levels were good readings. However, my vitamin D is still low, and I do take uh, 3,000 vitamin D every day. I don't know. Maybe we'll have to uh, raise that higher at the doctor's appointment. I don't know. We'll see what he says. But uh, my uh, A1C and blood glucose, low. And that is a very good thing because on my dad's side of the family, there is a history of uh, diabetes. In fact, one of his sisters, my aunt, actually died of diabetes when I was a kid back in, when was this? The early 2000s. I think I was like 12 or 13 at the time. And yes, she died of a horrible death. So that's one I take very seriously. And as we know, those who have had COVID also, there's several studies that show this, have an increased risk of developing diabetes. So that is really serious. Uh, my cholesterol level is actually low. Yes, for all you comment warriors out there that like to put the comments on there, you know, maybe it be on social media or on here when you see me in a mask. Ooh, you need more exercise. Yeah, I actually do exercise. I actually do get out of the house. Hey, this video's out in the wild. Uh, yeah, I actually do keep a track of how many steps I'm doing a day. I try and reach a goal. Some days if I'm not feeling well, yeah, I'm not going to reach that number of steps. But I try to reach a goal. Today's goal is actually 10,000 steps. Uh, more on that in a moment. But uh, yeah, so... Overall, a good uh, blood test. There were a couple other things, uh, minor things that uh, had just like borderline bad, but for the most part, I would say 90, 
we'll say 98% of it was really good, aside from that uh, vitamin D and just a couple real minor things. So that's uh, some good news to, for me that it's better than the last update. All right, if you test positive for COVID right now, flu or RSV, guess what? We're getting to that time. If you just test positive today, yeah, it's time to start thinking, hmm, will I be negative and will I be fine by the time Thanksgiving comes here in the United States on Thursday? Yeah, chances are you probably won't, which means you might want to cancel that travel or uh, that visit to see grandma because you know what? You could, in return, end up getting someone sick and it could be really serious. Let's pause for a second. Let's take a hydration break. It's not going to really hydrate you, but it's Saturday morning. Let's have a sip of coffee, shall we? My voice needs it to continue with this video. But yeah, if you have COVID flu or anything right now, you could still be contagious on uh, Thanksgiving. And even if you've tested positive, say a few days ago for COVID, and then test negative, say Tuesday or Wednesday, as we know, you could rebound. It happened with me. I had COVID last year. Long story short, I had COVID last year at Christmas time. And yeah, it happened just a couple days after Christmas. My mom had come back from, uh, where was she? In Vermont. She was sick, negative for COVID. She was completely negative. But mind you, I went into a couple stores which were crowded and I was masking. But when the stores just get so overly crowded and the CO2 levels go up, which they were going up, uh, a mask is not good enough. Even if you're in the best of masks, it's not always going to be foolproof. And there I went to, I got COVID. And if it wasn't for my mom being uh, sick, we would have gone to a relative's house where a high risk person would have come down from up north. Yeah, it would have been a disaster. And just like a day or two later after Christmas, boom, I tested positive. Mind you, I was sick before Christmas last year and then got better at Christmas and then got sick again, which turned out to be COVID. And with that case, uh, after a few days, I was a little bit better, tested negative, and then the headache, yeah, round two is where the really bad headache comes into play, which has never gone away. Uh, yeah, um, rebounded and tested positive again. So you get the idea here, and you can be infectious on a rebound. I've seen several reports where a family member does not get sick on the first case, but then someone rebounds and... Uh, passes it to other people with the rebound case. So just be very mindful of that. If you're going to go anywhere pre-Thanksgiving like today, I hate to admit this, but we got some very busy days. I got some very busy days coming up, so I'm not going to get a chance to do my little things for uh, Thanksgiving. We're going to Costco today. I know it's going to be an absolute zoo. I'll be masked. I'm going to take uh, precautions, got to go to another store as well. And then of course, uh, my motto for this week is when it comes to deliveries, if a place is just insanely busy, I'm on a signing. I'm not even taking the risk, but uh, can't do that too much. The apps can deactivate. All right, that does it for today's virus update. We crammed a lot into these last 18 minutes. If you enjoyed today's update, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with anyone you know. Ways to support the channel are listed down below. Leave your comments down below. And most important, please stay safe. If you're traveling, please stay safe. Uh, take precautions at those crowded airports, rest areas, bus terminals, train stations, wherever it is you may be going over the next week. Please be safe. Of course, we'll be back again tomorrow with uh, Dashboard, Dash Wastewater Sunday. And until I see you again tomorrow, please stay safe and have a fantastic Saturday. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye. Take care.